All right, welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. We are, this is a continuation of a project that we've been working on for several videos now. And uh, we are trying to solve this uh, strange problem. We have drain water from our kitchen sink and dishwasher ending up in some heating and cooling ducts that are buried underneath concrete in our house. And so uh, if you haven't seen the previous videos, there'll be a couple of those that will be in a playlist and you can check those out to see where we have come so far. But I think we have a solution. Do you think it's gonna work? Yeah. You do? All right, good, she's confident. This is that's what I like to hear. So we have discovered that somewhere underneath this, this is a concrete slab, somewhere underneath here, there's a drain pipe, a cast iron probably drain pipe that is buried and it connects a sink in this bar and runs all the way underneath the concrete all the way back to the back there where it goes out of the far end of the house. Somewhere between uh, this area right here and back to, uh, I guess I should say, somewhere to this area here, it is leaking into some 12 inch or 14 inch round ductwork that is buried in the concrete here and running out to our uh, living room out here where I found the water running out into a crawl space and making the house smell and everything else. So that is the problem. The solution that I have found, I believe, is to uh, cut this drywall. We actually had a leak uh, in, the, in the kitchen sink upstairs anyway, so I had to, I have to fix this drywall anyway. So we're gonna cut this out, see where that drain pipe runs, and I'm gonna try to run it out this wall into a crawl space that is, I think, as far as my measurements are taking me, on the other side of this, uh, above the ceiling here, there's a crawl space over there, and I can tie it into another sewer line or drain line that goes out and runs around the house and connects to the uh, main line on, on the uh, upper side of it. So that will help us to bypass all of the underground sewer pipe. Unfortunately, the little sink that we have uh, down here is gonna have to be abandoned. And so we'll have to redo this countertop and we'll, we'll, we'll cap that off and cover that over. It goes right into the concrete there. So, so down in this crawl space, We have, uh, so on the other side of that wall right there is where I believe the ceiling uh, drywall is that I'm gonna cut out somewhere somewhere up there. I'm not sure the exact height yet, um, but somewhere over there will be that. And then we'll have to somehow connect that drain from the kitchen sink somewhere up in here. Uh, I don't know how I'm gonna get it over here yet, but all the way over to this, this sewer pipe right here, drain pipe goes out under the ground and around the house to connect to the septic tank. Well, let's cut a hole in the ceiling and see what happens. Cut this, this out. First. You're gonna drop it. Oh, man. Oh, my So that's the kitchen sink right there. There's the water lines that go up to it and then that's the drain. And this comes into this pipe. Well, where does this, where does this come from? What is this? Is that right on the other side of that? header right there is the crawl space. Only one way to find out. Right there. So we're we're over in this corner. I want to be in this joy space here, so we'll move our hole over maybe six, eight, 10 inches as far over as I can in that joy space. Drill it there. All right, so we've got a, I drilled a hole, a new hole and piloted that through and found it on the other side. And so that's where we're gonna drill our, our drain hole. It's a perfect place. We have a little planning to do here. So we have a vent that is actually coming through, goes up to the roof right there. And that comes in to this two inch and then it, connects into the drain line that goes up to the sink. So because I have to I have to move all this up into the joist space in order to keep my slope into that crawl space, I'm gonna have to drill through the joist here, 
come through, keep this pipe up, and then convert to inch and a half back here somewhere. It's gonna all have to line up just right. You have to have a vent, air vent, in the drain, of course, so that there's no suction that takes place. It'll pull the water out of the P-trap, which is up above there, and then you'll get uh, sewer pipe gas that'll vent up into your sink. You don't want that. And drilling through joists, um, as long as you keep two inches off the top or bottom, uh, you should be fine. Even with a, with this size joist, a two inch hole uh, won't hurt anything. So you can also come back with, with a plywood, a piece of plywood and uh, staple it in a bunch of times or nail it in or screw it in a bunch of times and help to support the joist, but you shouldn't need to do that. I think that might have been why we were having some trouble with some of the drains. <laughs> That's the vent. Completely, well almost completely clogged. It looks like it probably was completely clogged. I probably vibrated a little bit of loose. What a mess. Whenever I'm using glue and primer, uh, normally I tape them together, but in this case I have to be up and down the ladder with one or the other of them. So I've left them separate, but I'm using one of these little dishes um, to keep them in. Man, if this thing spills uh, here, even through this drop cloth, it'll soak through and wreck all the carpet. And man, that stuff is, you know, just whatever that thing stains, just throw it away because it'll never come off. So this is the fitting I'm gonna use to connect the vent to the drain. If you're careful with your primer and your glue, you end up with a joint that actually looks pretty decent. It's one of my pet peeves is finding plumbing with all kinds of crazy drips and primer running all over everything. <laughs> it doesn't really matter, but it looks better. So I started at the vent because that's my tightest uh, turn. I'm limited about where I can come through the joists and where everything needs to connect there. So now I'm at the T. I'm gonna measure out now and drill our hole and then measure back and then connect it up to the drain. All right, well, we've got the vent T put in, the two inch back. I did use a 90 uh, right there. I uh, used a long sweep 90. It's kind of a, it's not always a good idea to do that, but um, on these vertical, uh, spots i don't mind using 90s on drains so i think that's probably fine and then on all the horizontals i'll use 22s or 45s or 60s or something like that so So this is what we have coming through. It's got to run all the way along that wall, all the way back to that corner. We're gonna come around the back of all this ductwork somewhere over in front of that shelf, unfortunately, up there, and then connect to the sewer that goes out. So for those of you who've been following along with the channel for a while, know that I used to do heating and cooling as a job many years ago. And the reason I quit <laughs> was because I hated attics and crawl spaces. I hated working in, in uh, this is actually a really nice crawl space compared to some of the crawl spaces I've been in. And here I am. So rule of thumb for plumbing is we need about an eighth inch to a quarter inch of fall per foot so 
We've got an inch and a half below the joist down there. We've gone 10 feet, so we need about another inch and a half of drop here. Um, we can go a little more than that probably. Duck work's not made to be really sat on. We're gonna see if this whole thing falls apart. All right, it's time to connect into the existing sewer pipe and start running back to my, uh, where I need to transition over here. So I have a couple options here. I could put a T or a Y, something like this, and then run my pipe down into it. The only issue with that is with this three inch pipe, everything being rigid here, and I've got a lot of connections. I've got a toilet connection here and shower connections and everything above this. I can't, I won't be able to move this pipe enough if I cut it to get the pipe in here and in here. I just don't have enough flex in it. So I don't, I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's going to be an option to put the Y in here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually tap into this clean out and I'm going to thread this uh, fitting in to the clean out. And then I'm going to put my, my Y in there. And then I'll just add a clean out to the end of this. We'll, we'll have a new, new clean out here. So, so it's always good to pre-build as much as you possibly can. So I try to get everything put together ahead of time. It's a lot easier to push these fittings together, especially three inch when you're on the floor here. We are all connected. So we go all the way back here, all the way around and through the wall on the back corner into the living room ceiling and up to the kitchen sink. And now I suppose it's time to test it <laughs> and run a bunch of water and make sure that nothing leaks, make sure that the the slope is good um, and everything. Uh, I'll be able to listen to the water. And I ran a level across everything just to make sure that there's no areas where it kind of goes up. Uh, we want to have that eighth inch per foot uh, drop over the whole thing so we get that water running. You don't want water sitting in the pipe because it'll it'll end up clogging up over time. So, all right, let's run some water, see what we got. We can finally use our kitchen sink without water draining into our underground heating ducts. <laughs> so. This is a big, uh, a big improvement. It took us a while to get this done because we had COVID in the middle of all this and other things going on. But uh, this part of it, kind of workaround, is completed. I have lots more work to do. I still have heating, cooling, uh, duct work, and uh, things to repair. I have to sanitize and clean out the ducts that uh, had all that drain water going in them. So I have to clean those out. And uh, just keep an eye on this, make sure none of this, this uh, leaks. And then once I'm sure that everything is good, I'll get that drywall repaired. Uh, so they'll be uh, my least favorite thing to do, <laughs> but so happy to have this done. Uh, this was a big kind of weight off my shoulders. We can kind of use our sink that, as normal now. We don't have to worry about it um, in, uh, in the dishwasher and all that stuff. So, so I want to thank you guys, uh, those of you who have been following along. Uh, there'll be lots more videos in this project kind of series. But uh, for those of you who've been following along and, and initially, you know, just gave so many ideas on what could be wrong and how to look at things and fix things and um, gave, me, gave me all kinds of great ideas. And so I appreciate you guys, uh, your feedback and, and your, you know, trying to look out for us. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Of course, subscribe if this is your first time here. I'd love to have you tag along. Lots more DIY projects and other things uh, coming up. It's almost fall here in Michigan. We'll be starting up those wood burners soon. Can't wait for it. So as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.